So here we have an expression root 3 times sine x minus cos x which we're asked to write in the form k times sine x minus a. So let's see what k sine of x minus a looks like when it's expanded. Now we know the addition formula the pattern for sine expansion is sine cos cos sine. The angles involved here are x and a x and a and for a sine if it's a subtraction it remains the same. However, there is a k times in front of this, so each of these terms must be multiplied by k. Both terms are multiplied by k. So we're attempting to write root 3 times sine x minus 1 times cos x in this form. So let's have a look at where we find our sine x term. There it is. That's our sine x term. And let's see what's multiplying it. The coefficient on the left hand side is root 3. On the right hand side, slightly more complicated, it's k times cos a. So we must have root 3 being the same as k times cos a. If we want these two expressions to be identical, then the number of terms of sine x that we've got, root 3 of them, must be the same as the number of sine in front of the sine x term here, which is k cos a. So let's write that down. k cos a is equal to root 3. Now let's examine the cosine x term. The coefficient of the cosine x term is negative 1. The cosine x term here has in front of it negative cos sine a. So doing a similar process, this negative 1 must match this negative k sine a. And if we have two negatives, if they're both equal to each other, then we can get rid of these negatives, multiply both sides by negative 1 if you like, um, balance the equations, we'll get 1 being the same as k sine a. So k sine a has to be 1. Now remember k was a positive number, and since we get two positive answers here. Both the cosine of a and the sine of a are positive. Now, if you remember the, the quadrant diagram, the only quadrant where both the sine and cosine are positive is in the first quadrant. All the, four, the three functions are positive, sine, cos and tan. They're all positive in the first quadrant. So this would imply that angle a is in the first quadrant quadrant. So we have two simultaneous equations. We have to find k and we have to find angle a. So the way that we find angle a is to divide. And we're bearing in mind that there is a formula, trig formula, sine of an angle A divided by cos A would be equal to tan A. So if I divide these two terms, that's this k sine A by this k cos A, we know k sine A is 1, we know k sine k cos A is root 3. So we're ending up with a k's cancelling and sine A over cos A, which we know is tan A, we have tan A being 1 over root 3. And we've already said that angle A is in the first quadrant. 
Now remember, this is the paper with no calculator, so we're left with the, the problem of finding which angle has a tangent that's 1 over root 3. Well, the diagram involved with a root 3 is an equilateral triangle of side 2. If we chop that in half, side 2 becomes side 1, and Pythagoras would tell us the third side, square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, that's the square root of 3. So to get a tangent at Sokatoa, opposite over adjacent being 1 over root 3, we would have to be sitting up at this angle, there's the opposite, 1 divided by root 3, adjacent. So this angle up at the top is half of one of the angles of this uh, equilateral triangle. We know the three angles in an equilateral triangle are 60, so we're talking about a 30 degree angle, which uh, must be the value that A takes. So A is 30 degrees. Tan A is tan of 30 degrees is 1 up in root 3. So we've determined what A is. Now, to determine what k is, let's square both of these expressions and add them so that we've got k cos a squared plus k sin a squared. Root 3 squared plus 1 squared. That's k cos a is, has value root 3 and k sin a has value 1. So k cos a squared plus k sin a squared will be root 3 squared plus 1 squared. Let's continue. That's k squared cos squared a plus k squared sin squared a. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. So that gives us a value 4. And we can see why we're doing this because if we take k squared out as a common factor, we're left with cos squared a plus sine squared a, which we know has a value of 1, no matter what the angle a is. So that's k squared times 1 equaling 4. Well, that just means that k squared is 4, and therefore k is 2. Now remember, negative 2 is not a valid value for k, because we're told up in the question that k is positive. So k equals 2 for that. So we have to express root 3 sin x minus cos x in the form k sin x minus a. Now we know k is 2, and we know a is 30. So there is the required form of this expression. So that's part A. Let's now move on to part B. And this asks us to sketch the graph with equation y equals root sine x plus minus cos x. This is the same expression that we've worked out in part A that can be written as 2 sine x minus 30. So we have to draw a graph of that, and they do provide us with a framework in the answer book. Uh, this framework was given upon which to draw the graph. Now, first of all, let's look at this expression 2 times sine x minus 30. And let's just uh, attempt to find the connection between this and the graph y equals sine x. First of all, the 2 at the front would increase the amplitude. So where you had a sine graph, let's draw in a sine graph. Starts off at 0, goes up to 1 when the angle is 90, and then it goes back down to 0 
when the angle's 180. Time we've reached 270, we're down to minus 1. And then we're back up to 0 at 360. So there's our typical sine curve. If we now double all the values of sine x, where we had a value of 1, we'll now have a value of 2. Where we had a value of 0, it'll still be 0. That value 0 will still be 0. Where we had a value of negative 1, we'll now have a value of negative 2. And this value of 0 will still be 0. So, as I said, what this does is doubles all the heights on the graph. We get an amplitude of 2, a sine graph with amplitude 2. Now the last part of this, the part we haven't captured yet, is if we subtract 30 from the angle, how does that work? Well, if we think about replacing x by 30, let's do this in green, if we replaced x by 30 degrees, then we would have sine 0. There's sine 0. So at 30 degrees, we've got our sine 0. In other words, the original sine 2x is being shifted 30 degrees to the right when we subtract 30 degrees from the angle x. So all the points on this blue graph, the y equals 2 sine x, have to be shifted 30 degrees to the left, to the right, sorry. So where we had at 90 degrees 2 there, 30 degrees, 120 degrees would now have a value of 2. And where it crossed at 180 and was 0, that gets shifted 30 degrees to the right. And 270, this value of negative 2, it gets shifted 30 degrees to the right. So we can see what's taking place here. There's the typical sine graph shape. In this case, it's twice sine x, and that's been shifted to the right. Now, there is a problem about where it crosses the y-axis and where it ends up here. You notice that 0 is less than a is less than 360. So we have to stop the graph at this point and at this point. When x is 0, we get the sign of minus 30. Now we know the sign minus 30 degrees. We know sine of 30 would have a, a value of a half. In this diagram down here, if we're up at this 30 degree angle and working out the sine opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 half. Sine of negative 30 would be negative a half. So this comes down it would come down to negative a half, but remember we're doubling it, so it would come down to negative one. So at this point, we must have a negative one. And the corresponding point, 360 degrees along here, would also be negative one. So that's the point 360 minus one. And this is the point zero minus one. We have it crossing at 30, zero, We've got 120, 2, as a point it passes through. It crosses at 210, 0, and then it comes down to negative 2 at 300. So this is the point 300, negative 2. So there's enough points given to make it very clear where that y equals 2 sine x minus 30 graph lies with respect to these axes.